welcome back once again this episode will focus on a very important but often neglected plant that is commonly seen in india it has a bit of a tongue twisting kind of name but believe me it is a very commonly encountered plant in the indian subcontinent it's also seen in other parts of the world we are talking about abrus precatorius we will start with what exactly is the importance of this plant the importance has to do with a toxic principle that is present in this plant which is called abrin i have titled this abrin eye of the needle and uh, dr roshni agrees that that is a very apt title you will understand as to the meaning behind that title a little later as we go along in this presentation so let us begin with the first question and that is what is abrus precatorius i told you already it's a plant what kind of plant it's an irritant plant we have a number of poisons which are classified as irritants we will refresh our memory with uh, the classification a little later but first of all let us look at the common names of these of this particular plant there are so many as you can see on this image on this slide you can call this plant crab's eye or jequirity or indian licorice rosary pea prayer bead love bean lucky bean rosary bead and there are many more these are only some of the names that are used to refer to this plant and many of these uh, common names are actually with particular reference to the seed which as you can see in the image here itself very distinctive indeed usually bright red scarlet with a black spot at one end coming back to the classification i told you this plant is an irritant an irritant is one of six major groups of poisons this is the standard classification i've talked about this kind of uh, classification in other episodes and in detail in the episode that dealt with uh, general toxicology i've given this mnemonic and i'm giving it to you again when you classify poisons remember syncan which is an abbreviation or an acronym actually where each letter stands for a particular group of poisons so the first c for caustics or corrosives i for irritants and that is where abrus precatorius comes in there is also one other very important irritant already dealt with by roshni i presented that also that is resin then you have n for neurotoxic poisons the second c for cardiovascular poisons a for asphyxiants and m for miscellaneous this is the standard classification putting all the poisons in six major groups each of these groups of course there are subdivisions so when you look at irritants you have a number of subdivisions there as you can see from this slide two broad categories inorganic irritants or inorganic elements and then you have organic toxins inorganic elements or two varieties or two kinds non metallic like phosphorus and halogens then you have the heavy metals or metallic irritants like arsenic lead mercury copper iron thallium and so many others the second major subcategory under irritants is the organic toxins which comprise irritant plants 
like Castor, Calotropis, Croton and of course Abris which we will be discussing in detail in this particular episode. Do not forget bites and stings. There are a number of venomous creatures which bite or sting and there you have organic toxins of animal origin. Snake, scorpion, spider, bee, wasp are some examples. But then in this particular episode we will be concentrating on Abrus precatorius. And as you can see from this image, it's a beautiful plant. It's actually a climbing vine which has uh, compound leaves with a number of narrow leaflets as you can see in the image, 10 to 15 pairs generally. Flowers are small and pinkish. The most important part of the plant of course are the seeds which are present inside pods. That also you can see in this image. Generally four to six seeds inside each pod and the pod splits open when it gets ripe. Seeds are bright scarlet generally with a black spot on one side as you can see in this image. But don't be misled. Many of your textbooks mention Abra seeds as only this kind of you know appearance, bright red with black spot on one side. But really speaking, there are a number of varieties. This is perhaps the commonest, but you have Abrus precatorius with various colors of seeds. Aside from the scarlet red with black spot on one side, that which is the most common variety, you also have seeds which may be completely, you know, red without any black spot. There may also be Abrus, you know, seeds which are pure white or pure black or even blue yellow, brown, there may or may not be a spot on one side. These are uncommon varieties, I agree. Some of them are pretty rare. But do remember, Abris precatorius can come in a variety of forms when you look at the seeds. With regard to active principles or toxic principles, seeds are the most toxic part of the plant. I've already said that. And uh, the seeds contain a number of active principles which are all toxic. The most toxic being abrin, which is a toxic protein or tox albumin. You also have abrine, which is an amino acid, abrilin, which is a glucoside, and abric acid, which is of course an acid. But the most important is abrin, which is a lectin composed of two polypeptide chains connected by a disulfide bridge. And it is similar to some other deadly toxins like botulinum, tetanus, diphtheria. But those are not the toxins which we will be discussing in toxicology, that is microbiology. We are looking at abrin, which is as toxic as any of these which are listed here. And also don't forget ricin or ricin, which was discussed in another episode. There are actually some uses for the seeds of this plant because of the very attractive nature. They are often used in jewelry like necklaces and sometimes in rosaries which are used for prayers. You can see the image here, a lady wearing a beautiful abrus necklace. There is also an image of a bracelet. But don't be deceived by the appearance. They are very deadly indeed and you need to be very careful. Fatal dose is just one to two seeds. If you chew them and swallow them, they can be deadly. If seeds are swallowed without being chewed, then there may not be much of a problem. And if you look at the active principle, the toxic principle, abrin, just 90 to 120 milligram can be fatal to an adult. Just about one to two milligram per kg body weight can be fatal. So it is a super toxic poison or a super toxin. On exposure, that is when somebody chews on the seeds or when seeds are crushed and swallowed or if abrin is extracted and injected, then you get the following features, clinical features. Gastritis, which is usually hemorrhagic and that can be very severe. Sometimes it is in the form of gastroenteritis. 
There can also be cardiac arrhythmias, sometimes convulsions with CNS depression and cerebral edema. If the extract, that is aparin, is injected, it can cause cardiovascular manifestations which are very similar to what you will encounter in a viper bite. And that can be of medical legal importance as we will see later. Ocular exposure to the active principle can cause redness and its conjunctivitis, sometimes leading to blindness. So as you can see, overall, this is a really deadly poison or toxin indeed. With regard to treatment, unfortunately, there is nothing specific. Some textbooks mention anti abrin that can be given all, almost in the form of an antidote. I am afraid that is not correct. If at all it existed, it must have existed long ago. I don't know as to whether it was effective and how it was you know, manufactured. But we don't certainly have an anti abrin today. So that is an obsolete piece of information. If somebody has swallowed uh, the seeds, chewed or otherwise, or crushed, you'll have to undertake the usual methods of decontamination, like gastric lavage, activated charcoal. They can be very helpful, especially if uh, that is undertaken within a few minutes or a couple of hours after the seeds have been ingested. Aside from that, much of the treatment is supportive only with main emphasis on hydration because there is gastroenteritis. If there are convulsions, the usual methods can be employed to treat them, like for instance benzodiazepines like diazepam can be given. Renal failure is likely to develop and often is a cause of death and that should be managed by hemodialysis and the rest of it is symptomatic. If there is ocular exposure, there should be thorough irrigation of the eyes with running water and uh, an early ophthalmological consultation is imperative. With regard to the medical legal importance, forensic importance, accidental poisoning is certainly likely in children, especially those who forage in the countryside and come across this plant and when they look at the seeds are so attractive because of the natural curiosity that is there in children, they may chew the seeds and sometimes get seriously poisoned. So tragic pediatric cases are reported from time to time. Then some of the textbooks uh, make a, a special mention of uh, the use of uh, abrid in the form of uh, needles uh, that uh, once upon a time actually was employed to kill cattle in rural India. The extract of the seeds used to be prepared in the form of needles which were used for injecting into the poor animal and sometimes I believe this has this method has been employed to kill humans also homicides and since a needle is called sui in Hindi uh, these were come you know were known as uh, sui poisons and uh, mostly of historical importance only today we don't really come across cases of sui poisoning or you know abrin poisoning by injecting needles and all that nowadays we don't come across such cases so it's mostly of historical importance this image shows you as to how those needles are shaped and uh, very you know pointed and that can be used to penetrate into the tissues of the animal or rarely in the case of homicide in the human so that is with regard to the forensic or medical legal importance Mainly you should uh, remember with uh, regard to children, accidental poisoning is quite common and you can also mention uh, historically these uh, so-called uh, needles that were prepared from abrin or suis, uh, that is also uh, something that can be mentioned in the examination, the practical aspect, you know, we don't come across such cases anymore. So that is all from um, in this particular episode to do with Abrin that is derived from Abris Precatorius. It is goodbye 